Good morning. Well, we had a wonderful picnic. We had over 50 people attend our picnic. We had some great food. We had bingo and prizes and uh, some really nice fellowship and, uh, and some good music. So thank you for everybody who uh, contributed and participated. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a wonderful occasion and a nice way to end the summer and start our fall season. And kids are going back to school and uh, I think it's a, a good tradition we have going on there. Another thing, um, we, uh, I was told I wasn't able to participate myself uh, because classes are starting over at Cal U, but um, I was told we had uh, a lot of people come to our rumming sale, and uh, so far they have uh, made over $500, which is, I would say, very successful. Um, however, uh, now we need to get rid of all the rest of the, the stuff. So, um, so we're not having coffee hour today, and uh, we're doing two things after the service. If anybody is interested in uh, the church choir, uh, Edie's going to have a meeting following church. Where and when? Right after church. Right after church. And it's not just the music side of it. It's also the worship service side. It's actually the worship and uh, music committee of session is looking for members. So if you would like to stay for, uh, it's not going to be too long, but if you'd like to stay, um, we'll talk about what goes into a worship service and how, how we pick music and that sort of thing. So anybody who wants to participate in worship services or music, sounds good. And uh, is it going to be here? Um, we'll have it in the ladies lounge. Okay, in the lounge. And, uh, but uh, also, instead of coffee hour, we're encouraging everybody to go downstairs. And, uh, hey, you may have donated some stuff, but you may need some stuff to replace that. So pick up some things. If you didn't happen to bring any cash, you can bring it next week. And uh, also, they may have some sales, like take a box of books for a dollar or something. You never know. Uh, we got a lot of books. Um, so uh, I also just wanted to share some sad news. Uh, I talked with Diane uh, yesterday, and she had a wonderful vacation in Alaska with Lee. And very unexpectedly, uh, Lee passed away in his sleep. And uh, there were no warning signs or anything like that. He had, he had been having a wonderful time uh, together. Um, she's planning on uh, bringing him home and flying back Tuesday. And uh, we have not planned a service yet, uh, but we'll be talking about that after after she returns, but uh, please reach out, uh, see if she needs anything. I know this is a, uh, a shock and a difficult time, and uh, but she should be back Tuesday evening, and then uh, we'll, we'll announce plans for the funeral service uh, once those plans are made. Please join with me now for our call to worship. Turn us, O oh God, away from the world's temptations and distractions. Return us, O oh God, to the quiet calm of your presence. Restore us, O oh God, to the path you call us to follow. Orient us, O oh God, to the help of all that is possible through you. Let us worship the God whose promises call and claim us, singing our first hymn, Alleluia, sing Jesus.
humbly acknowledge how we have gone astray and confess our sins to God. God, our refuge, you hear our cries for mercy. You lift the lowly and offer hope to the hopeless. But we who benefit from your grace do not emulate you and your ways. We are quick to condemn, exaggerate, critique, and act mercilessly. We confess the ways we demean and dehumanize others. We pray for your forgiveness. Amen. Let us confess our sins silently. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you my name, and you are mine. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 11. 
Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin, Lord, does not count against them, and is whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with the songs of deliverance. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You are you righteous. Sing to all you who are upright and alive. So, at the picnic, we concluded uh, a series of sermons which talked about the parables of Jesus Christ throughout the New Testament. And I thought that uh, the picnic would be a nice demarcation to change uh, the subject of our scripture passages. And so we're talking now about different types of miracles and the significance of those miracles throughout the New Testament. One of the most interesting ones is Jesus healing the paralyzed man. And it appears in all, in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, here's our reading from Matthew. Jesus stepped into the boat crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they praised God, who had given such authority to man. So today's sermon is about both the miracle of forgiveness and the miracle of healing. When we look at the other two Gospels of Mark and Luke, the story is slightly different. It's a little more dramatic. Their faith uh, takes a little <laughs> twist uh, to get the paralyzed man to Jesus. Here, the story was uh, a demonstration of faith. In the other Gospels, Jesus is teaching in a house, and the crowd is so dense uh, and the individual's faith is so strong that they climbed onto the roof of the house and they pulled the paralyzed man up and they dug a hole in the roof and they lowered the paralyzed man down into the room to lie before Jesus. So it was a little more dramatic in the other two Gospels, but it all tells the same story of faith, forgiveness, and healing. So, let's look at this passage first. 
Jesus stepped on a boat, crossed over, and came to his own home. So it doesn't say in Matthew where his home is, but it does say in the other two Gospels, and we know that at that time his home base was Capernaum. Most people would have thought it was Nazareth. But prior to this, Jesus has said that prophets are not accepted in their hometowns. Uh, and Jesus was rejected in his hometown of Nazareth. And uh, not only are prophets often rejected, but imagine the Messiah being rejected as well. They are rarely accepted in their hometowns. I'm no Messiah or prophet, but I can tell you, if I went back to my hometown and asked for a job in my <coughs> high school, they'll say, isn't that the Elias boy? <laughs> I've got a history, but I'm no longer that teenager. What what are some of the reasons why prophets or Jesus, the Messiah, are not accepted in their hometowns? Well, familiarity is probably the greatest reason. People grow up with this individual. They know uh, the history, and they might say, well, isn't that the carpenter's son? That's Jesus, yeah. Another reason might be preconceived notions. They knew Jesus as a child, as a teenager, and these preconceived notions, perhaps, that he might become a carpenter and work with his dad, led to doubt. How could this uh, average carpenter's son be a prophet? It's hard to change our perceptions of others. Perhaps it, the reason is skepticism. Many thought that Jesus was mad, that something had changed in his mind, and he had gone a bit crazy to believe the things that he believed. Ultimately, all of these things together lead to doubt. And with doubt, it is difficult to have a strong faith. However, in today's scripture passage, Jesus had moved to a nearby town of Capernaum, and there the people accepted him. They saw him for who he truly was. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, my son. Your sins are forgiven. Well, in the other scripture passage, it says that Jesus could perform few miracles in his hometown of Nazareth because of the people's lack of faith. In fact, a crowd of people got so angry with Jesus that he had to leave, and he passed through the crowd without them knowing. And so he made residence in Capernaum. There's definitely a connection between faith and miracles. Not only in the ones requesting the miracle, but also in the ones performing the miracle in the name of God or in the name of Jesus. Both individuals have to maintain faith. And when there is doubt, it is difficult to find miracles. And with this faith came the words from Jesus not the words, you are healed, which might have been expected, but instead the words, your sins are forgiven. This was not expected by the crowd 
or by the paralyzed man and his friends. I wonder if there may have been at first some confusion in those who had sought physical healing instead of spiritual forgiveness. But remember, a long time ago, probably last year, we had talked and had some sermons about the concept of miracles. And one of the things that we mentioned is that miracles are never done for the sake of the awe-inspiring act itself. Miracles always point beyond the phenomena to the one who gave power for the miracle to occur. Miracles point to God. They shift our focus from what's happening in our town or lives or the healing, whatever it might be. They shift our focus to God. In this scripture, Jesus begins to open our eyes to that bigger picture, to the coming offer of salvation and to his true identity as Christ or Messiah, to the one who saves, which is the meaning of Christ or Messiah. Christ came with love, grace, and healing for all who believe. Many ministers may address this question that Jesus asked, which is the greater miracle, to be healed or to be forgiven? But let's take this a step further than that question. With forgiveness, do we not also find healing? They are inextricably tied together. Many times people can carry around feelings of guilt or remorse or regret or spiritual separation from their maker or from other Christians. It is only when they repent and ask for forgiveness and receive that grace of forgiveness that they feel these negative thoughts washed away. They are clean again. They feel lighter. And they no longer fixate on those negative feelings. But they move on to more positive attitudes in the spirit of Christ. To be forgiven is to be reconciled with our Creator, to no longer be separated due to sin, to be in the presence of God once again. So let's take a look at the rest of this passage that we read this morning. Some of the scribes who were watching all of this take place. I'm not sure whether they were there to learn or perhaps they were there out of curiosity or perhaps they were there to condemn. But they were watching and listening. And they said to themselves, this is blasphemous. This goes against what God teaches. It takes away from the divine. Who does this Jesus think he is? God, the Messiah? Well, Jesus knew what they were thinking and mumbling to themselves, even though they didn't say it to him directly. And he said to them, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Remember, it was quite different what he said to the paralytic and his friends. To him, he said, my son, take heart. It was quite the opposite. These individuals had evil thoughts in their heart. The other ones 
held faith in their heart. And then he said, he asked that same question, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk? He said, I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He says this directly. This is a pretty big statement. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. And the man stood up and left. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe. Awe is a response to something that is awesome. And they praised God who had given such authority to Christ. This, this last part is the true miracle. Yes, this individual received forgiveness that was the unexpected miracle. Yes, the healing of the paralyzed man so that he might walk again. If a miracle was to be expected, that's what was expected by the crowd. But the most important result was that it invoked awe in the crowd. When somebody experiences awe, a response to something that is awesome, it points to God's power because it is from God that this miracle even occurred, this wonder. I think that it brought many in that crowd to believe they now had faith after becoming witnesses to not only this miracle, but the power of God placed in Jesus. And they too began to follow Jesus in their hearts. So this miracle that pointed beyond itself not only forgave this individual of sins, not only healed this individual and he was able to walk again, but it brought an entire crowd to faith. And that is a difficult thing to do sometimes. Yes. How about miracles today? How does this passage speak to us today? Well, it's rare that we see a miracle like Jesus performs, automatic healing of the sick. But in faith, we know that miracles do occur. Perhaps not the way we expect. And this was not the way the crowd expected this miracle to occur. Either. It pointed to the end of Christ's ministry, to salvation, the forgiveness of sins, the giving of grace and the Holy Spirit. The Jewish people believed, and they still believe, that when we pray for a miracle, when we pray for God's intervention in our lives, we should pray and give thanks as if the miracle has already occurred. We have that much faith that we give thanks before the miracle even happens. And we give thanks to God, for God is the cause of all miracles, of all goodness, of all grace. When we think about miracles, how often do we think that forgiveness needs to be part of that blessing. How many times do we feel as though we need to accept the grace so freely offered 
Accept the forgiveness and allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Once the Holy Spirit begins to work, a miracle might take place. But I think in my own life, one of the greatest things that took place is healing. Healing spiritually, this feeling of grace and love entering my life. This feeling that this love overflowed and I could share it with others. A healing of regret or guilt or of all of the things that weighed me down. Once accepting this grace and forgiveness, I felt light once again. I felt connected spiritually once again. And I know that we often pray for physical healing and intervention if somebody is sick or struggling in some way. And I think that those prayers are answered, but God answers them in different ways. We've talked about this before. Whatever God's will is, is usually for our good. But no matter what the answer is, whether it be no, or yes, that will happen immediately, or yes, but we're going to go about this in a different way or unexpected way. All of those things, all of those answers to our prayers tell me one thing, that God does answer prayer and that I am never alone even in the midst of my life struggles. I think God is here for each and every one of us no matter what our struggle in life is. Amen. Join me in our hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Now's our time to share joys and concerns, prayers, and ask for God's intervention in our lives. Our prayers, of course, uh, for Diane and her family, and uh, any other prayers today. Joys. Thanks. <laughs> and Shannon's back, and her son had a wonderful graduation from basic. Very nice. He's on to another training program now. All right, well, let's pray. Lord God, we come to you in prayer and we first give you thanks for your presence in our lives, for miracles that have gone unnoticed, for your presence that we often do not see or acknowledge. And yet we know we are never alone. Promise that you would always be with us. You gave us the blessing of the Holy Spirit that might always be with us and work through us so that we might also do your will, find the comfort that can only be found through Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for all of those who are experiencing grief or loss. We pray for those traveling, uh, coming back to school or vacation or, or going to different locations. Keep us safe. Lord God, we pray for those who are struggling with illness or recuperation uh, or rehabilitation. Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, uh, we pray for those experiencing emotional issues or addiction or any other issues. Help them to find your peace. We pray for those with uh, needs, whether it be uh, food, shelter, clothing, physical needs, whatever they might be, we know that you can provide them. We ask that you work through each and every one of us so that we might help others. Lord God, we pray the way you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And one more announcement that uh, I didn't mention yet. I was able to visit um, Mary Janet in the hospital, and uh, she is now home. Uh, she had an infection after a gallbladder operation, but uh, she's on antibiotics, and she's home now, and uh, getting some physical rehabilitation, so we pray for her continued healing. Amen. Join me now in our prayer, take my life and let it be consecrated. <laughs>
God offers each and every one of us. And open your eyes to the miracle that that salvation provides. And now may the Lord God bless you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.